GameStop, Robinhood, Bitcoin, Elon Musk, what does that have to do with you? Well, if you're not in the market, I gotta say, why not? My name is Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. In today's video, I'm so excited to make for you guys. I typically, I don't wear a hat. I was up at 4.30 in the morning, getting a workout in, seeing what was happening with the markets, and I was like, I gotta make a video around this to inform people really what's going on. And I'm gonna do my best to be, you know, to not be biased in certain situations. So I got a lot of content I'm gonna read from my computer here today. I'm gonna share with you some great points, but my point in this video is to educate you, to bring more awareness. And for some of you guys that are investors and you, you're you more of an expert even than I am, awesome. I'm actually just, be, I'm like a novice in this stuff, but I wanna make sure that I can get this out and you guys can make your own decisions from there. I'll give you some great lessons too. All right, let's start with GameStop. Over the last 72 to 48 hours, there's been a whirlwind in the investing world, right? GameStop, just over a week ago, was less than $40 a share, and then all of a sudden, it started to shoot up. And I think it was Monday, it went up like almost $100. And we're like, what is going on? Because GameStop was actually closing many stores and they were looking like they were on the verge of bankruptcy, really. Like they were just holding it together. And so they were kind of like almost on their way out, I guess you could say. Although that probably wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> but with that being said, I want to share with you, Elizabeth Warren said uh, she blasted the SEC um, saying they should crack down on what's happening in Wall Street, right? And again, I'm going to do my best to, to kind of be unbiased here. Um, but she said that the stock soared over 900% in one week. Now, why is that? Because there was Reddit users that were pumping up this stock, uh, stock, excuse me. And all of a sudden we had these huge head fund that were actually shorting the stock, right? What shorting is, is it's just, hey, they're betting that the price is going to drop and they can make money off of that. Some people don't agree with that, but in this play, as these Reddit users were pumping up this stock, and I think it got so inflated that it was in the S&P 500 for a little bit, short period of time, um, but I'm, I didn't check on that, but please correct me if I'm wrong. So with that, anyway, so this happened, right? And it was crazy. People were pumping up this stock and it was like the little guys versus the big guys and the little guys were winning. Well, you might say, okay, Joe, what's wrong with that? Well, some people say that's stock manipulation in the SEC should have came in and regulated. That's what Elizabeth Warren's saying here, um, <clears throat> that that was absolutely insane. So what's wrong with people making money, right? Like if you weren't in, you didn't see this, you didn't jump in, you missed out on an incredible opportunity. Now I did not jump in. I was just watching it because my money was tied up in other places and I didn't know where it was going, but uh, I also wasn't on Reddit to find out what was truly going on there. And by the time you knew, it was already up to, I think $337 a share from under 40 and below. I think this time last year, they were like, in the single or single digits, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I didn't fact check that, so please forgive me. But with that being said, what happened is these billionaires started losing billions of dollars, right? And all of a sudden, that threw, you know, threw a wrench in everything. Now, with that being said, Robinhood shut down trading on GameStop, AMC, and a bunch of, a couple other stocks. And so while the little people, right, the average Joe, what they were doing was getting pissed, right? Some, some people were a little frustrated that they couldn't buy, they couldn't sell. I, I think at one point, Robinhood allowed you to sell, but they stopped that platform, and I even think Weeble, stopped you from being able to do anything for a period of time, right? Because of the volatility and these billionaires were losing money. And then all of a sudden people are now, what they're doing is they're saying, I'm not using Robinhood. And I posted, I choose not to use Robinhood. And so again, I'm gonna remain unbiased, but I have to inject what I did because I wanna be transparent there, right? And what that's doing is, you know, as people were selling and people aren't using the platform, they had to go out and they've raised, they had to get a line of credit from six banks amounting to 500 to $600 million um, to meet higher margins and lending and requirements. 
So with that being said, a lot of these billionaires invested in Robinhood, gave them, they got equity in the company to keep Robinhood alive. <clears throat> now, you might sit there and say, okay, well, why is that a big deal? Well, a lot of people on one side are saying, you know what, hey, that that's be, it's being corrupt, right? That's not being authentic. That's the billionaires, the rich doing what they're doing to manipulate the markets like they've always done. And then on the other side, you got to look at these hedge funds too. And again, this is the unbiased part. These hedge funds, what they're doing is they have pensions for pe millions of people around the world. Obviously, the people who own it and the higher ups, they're making a ton of money, right? Hundreds of millions of dollars off of these, uh, off of their investors and stuff like that. And so, you, but you got to see, you know, hey, what could people be losing? What impact could that have down the line? <clears throat> And so you got this balancing act where it's like the little people are finally stepping up to those on Wall Street and, you know, they're giving it to them. But then you got to look at, well, these people take care of a lot of the little people. And so where's the harmony, right? Well, here's the thing. Are you taking advantage of it, right? Are you taking advantage of these opportunities? Now, is it fair? Yes. Is it fair? No. You get to form your own opinion on it. But I will tell you, Robin Hood, from my perspective, I'll say this. Robin Hood, I think, was doing what they needed to do. And I'm going to leave it as clear as that or as plain as that. They had to do what they needed to do, whether that was the billionaires buying them off, giving them money, giving them, getting equity in the company, whatever it is, you know, it is what it is. And it, this is the most obvious signs of manipulation. There's my unbiased part uh, or my biased part. So, if you look at it from a bigger perspective, you're going to sit there and say, you know what? This is manipulation at its finest. It's the rich getting what they want. And so call it what you want. The question is, are you man are you profiting from it? Are you managing your portfolio to take advantage of it? Because I will tell you, you're not in with the hedge funds. Most of you, unless they're managing your pension, which a lot of people, they don't have pensions anymore. So it's a lot of wealthy investing in these hedge funds too. And the wealthy are losing their money uh, when this type of things happen. So they don't want that to happen. So you get to form your own opinion, but you got to ask yourself, am I taking advantage of this? Now, there's a lot of different things going on saying that, you know, Reddick is pumping into new stocks. Uh, we'll jump into crypto here in a second. But you got to ask yourself, do you want to continue using Robin Hood because they don't charge fees. Like I don't use Robin Hood. I use it a little bit, but most of what I use is in TD Ameritrade. And that's just the platform I choose because that's where I like to go and I'm used to it. And yes, I get charged fees for there, but I'm okay with the fees because I was told, I didn't check because I didn't want to buy in, but I was told that TD Ameritrade yesterday, when, ever, when Robin Hood shut down trading, you could trade on TD Ameritrade and a couple other platforms. That's what put people into a frenzy. So while Robinhood is good for the little guy where you're not getting charged fees, where you're getting maybe over the course of a year, it might up, up to over a thousand dollars depending on your activity, you gotta make your decision, right? <clears throat> I'm okay with TD Ameritrade. I'm choosing not to use Robinhood and that is my bias part there. So, all right, let's shift gears. Now, I'm a novice in the crypto world and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a couple experts and have an interview them around crypto to say, okay, well, what is the advantages of crypto? Why should I invest? Why should I not invest? Because what's going on, what's happening in Robinhood and GameStop and all that in the market, that's all centralized, right? Where the cryptocurrency is decentralized, right? The blockchain technology, like total transparency cannot be manipulated in any way, shape or form at least that we know of right now, okay? And it's been proven true uh, over this last decade plus. So here's what happened. A lot of people look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as the wild, wild west. At least that's how I refer to it. It's the wild, wild west. And you know what? It's extremely volatile, right? It's going up and down all the time. And so why does that matter? Well, you can make a ton of money and you can sure lose a ton of money if you're not emotionally sound. And I coach a lot of traders and I'll get into that here in a little bit. But what's exciting is Bitcoin, the, mo the number one coin out there, right? And then I love the second largest coin, which is Ethereum. And that's where I play in a lot. I have a little bit of Bitcoin, but Ethereum is where I play. But anyway, with that being said, <clears throat> Bitcoin shot up over 
night. It shot up almost 20% overnight. Now, why? Why does it do that? Is it just because that's how crypto is? No. What happened was, and I'll put a picture here in a moment, uh, Elon Musk, around like 1 a.m., he tweeted out a tweet. I'll put it here, and I'll put a picture right here. And then he had uh, Bitcoin on, in his title, right? Like his uh, underneath his name, he put uh, Bitcoin. And with that, what it's done is it infused $100 billion dollars into the crypto space. Now, the market cap, I believe right now, is a trillion dollars. So if you look at 100 billion coming in, that's a 10% increase. Well, what did that do? What It went to the number one coin mostly. It shot Bitcoin up. I think it was somewhere yesterday when I went to bed, it was around 30 to 32,000. And it shot it up to 37,000. And so we saw almost a 20% increase on Bitcoin. And then it shot Ethereum up too. And I think it's about right now close to its all time high as I make this video. So yes, is Bitcoin a lot? You got it. But there's other coins that you could be investing in and taking advantage of. And so I use Ethereum. I think I started buying in around $928 a coin, all the way up to $1275. And so I, I'm just learning, I'm just getting into it. I encourage you to really do your research because if Elon Musk is talking about Bitcoin, you have to wonder, does that mean it's here to stay? Does that mean uh, um, Elon Musk is actually going to invest in Bitcoin or has he? Is What effect does that have with Tesla? Rumors are going around and I'm just sharing with you what I hear. I'm not saying this is all speculation, but Visa might be taking it. I know Bank of America is looking at stable coins. A lot of banks are looking at it. Uh, as part of their portfolio, I'll say, and to tap into that market. Well, it's a wild, wild west right now. There's no regulations around it. That means you can make a ton of money or you could lose a ton of money. Now, <clears throat> here's what I'll say. Let's go ship gears into coaching mode here because I coach a lot of traders. I, I trade and I've been in this just for a short game. I actually, this is what I want to share with you. I actually still play in centralized market and I put my money in a portfolio every month. I pick a percentage of my income. For me, I choose 30 to 40%, usually around 40% of my income to go into my portfolio that I do not touch, that is with a larger institution that does play in the stock market, the Dow and this S&P 500. So I encourage you to pick a percentage of your income and always store it away. Make sure you pay you first. However, I'm thinking about taking 10% of that and playing in the crypto space. I've already put in about, I think, 20 to 30 grand in the crypto space, but month after month continuing to add for a long-term play. Now that's just my strategy. You don't have to do it. I'm just saying, I think crypto is going to be something of the future. And I think people are just getting tired of the manipulation. And it's an incredible way to kind of regulate that or deregulate that, however you want to say it. So anyway, with that, um, let's go into crypto a little bit here. So with that, a little bit of coaching here. Now, I've been in Ethereum. I have a buddy I text every day around this and we, we're always researching and talking, going back and forth, following some YouTubers around crypto. Um, and we both jumped in kind of around the same time. My strategy is more of a long-term hold because I think crypto is going to be here for the long term and it's going to over time skyrocket. We just saw, you know, $100 billion being infused into crypto, which is a 10% increase in the market cap. And as long as the market cap for crypto continues to grow, it just means that it's going to be here to stay. But who knows? It could all go away tomorrow, right? So I'm not saying that my opinion's right. There's a lot of people who believe in crypto. I didn't believe in crypto in the past. I thought it was just, you know, a bunch of people just having fun. The reason why I started jumping in this year is because I heard that large institutions were buying in and banks were starting to explore and to create stable coins and to accept Bitcoin and other coins. So to me, if these big banks are doing it, these larger institutions are doing it, then it might be something to really focus in on. However, I have a buddy in the finance and as of right now, they're not playing in it. And so I'm always trying to bounce off of people and I collect all this information, <clears throat> not because I want to be manipulated or influenced by one or the other. It's because I want to make sure I take everything in, synthesize it to make my own opinion for what I want to do in my portfolio to create the life that I want to achieve. You must do the same too. And that's why I'm making this video here for you today. 
So with that, uh, my buddy that I text back and forth, so his uh, strategy was around trading, right? He's gonna buy in at a low point and then sell at the high points where he sees some candlesticks completing at, on the hour mark or four hour mark, depending on what he's looking at, usually around the four hour mark. And the other day, yesterday, he bought in at a low point and he, right on point, right? Right on point from what he thought it was gonna do. And then he saw where kind of the resistance was and the support and all that. And he started to sell at this certain point. He sold all his Ethereum. And he made a good solid 5% from what he put in. Now you might say, wow, 5%. Well, 5% in then like a two to three day period is huge compared to most people, what they're doing most of the time, they're not even making 5% in a year. Okay, so for him to make 5% in a few days versus 5% in a year, that's huge. So with that being said, <clears throat> I woke up this morning around 4.30, started working out. I saw what happened on crypto with Elon and I texted him immediately. And uh, shortly thereafter, he woke up and he was pissed <laughs> because he could have made probably double the amount of profit if he didn't sell. But what I, what I was telling him was he operated by his principles and he won the game, right? Most people, what they do is they play on emotion and not by principles. If you're going to invest, I highly, highly, highly encourage you. You must, you must operate on principles and not emotions. I see it all the time. People who operate on emotions lose their shirt. People who operate on principles, they make money over a gradual period of time and then it stacks, stacks, stacks and next thing you know, they're an overnight success, right? After about five to 10 years. So anyway, <clears throat> I shared with him, you can't predict unicorns. And he was looking for that unicorn and he's frustrated that he missed it. But I was like, you operated on your principles. You can't can't predict unicorns like Elon Musk tweeting, you know, at one in the morning. And so you can't play that role, right? And it, I kind of shared with, with him the analogy of, look, that's like, <clears throat> you have to let it go, right? That's like an NFL quarterback in the Super Bowl. He throws an interception for a touchdown in the beginning of the game. He, what's he got to do? If he sits there and dwells on how he screwed his team over, he's probably gonna play like crap later. But he has to get rid of that, he has to let it go. The greats do that, they let it go and they get back on the game plan and say, okay, what do I need to do next to win? And that's exactly what I shared with him is he's gotta let go and figure, what do I need to do to win, right? To play in the game. And I asked this to a lot of my clients, but it puts it in perspective, in five to 10 years, will that matter? And the answer is mostly no, it won't. But someone might argue, okay, well, if I would have doubled that, I could have took that money and grew that and, and blah, 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 right? And we could play the shoulda, woulda, coulda game or the what if game all day long. But you gotta live in the reality of what we're doing here. And so the grades, they don't operate on emotion, they operate on principles. So you gotta find out what are your principles if you're gonna trade? Some of you guys that are pros at this, what are your principles? Comment below, we'd love to hear that. But what I will say is, I really believe, and this is the bias part, I really believe crypto is here to say, especially when more large institutions pour money in, right? And so you might sit there and say, <clears throat> well, that's great, but there's no regulation right now, so it's still the wild, wild west, and you can lose your shirt, and that's absolutely true. But what I will say is if large institutions see that there's opportunities to get their money, then great. They're gonna do it. And I heard, I read on an article that Harvard, and I think it was Yale, but Harvard actually was, um, they were in, they've been investing in Bitcoin for over a year now. And so I don't know the validity to that, but if you, universities are doing things like that, man, you may wanna pay attention. Read, get out there. I said, here's what I would encourage you to do. I would go on Google and set an alert for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. That's what I've done. Uh, go on Twitter. If you want to support Twitter after what happened with the you know, censorship of Donald Trump, some people don't, they deactivated. Twitter's uh, stock dropped significantly. But Elon Musk is still on there, so I set following, I deactivated other accounts. Um, but my main account, I have Elon Musk uh, alerts go off when he tweets because that can move markets. You know, even Warren Buffett or Ray Dalio, you may wanna look at these people because they're big time investors too, right? And so you may wanna check that out. See what you need to do to take advantage of this, right? And I hope 
you do take a look at crypto and it may not be a large portion of your portfolio. It may be something like you got to decide, maybe it's 5%, maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 1%. But I would take the chance of taking a portion of your monthly income, putting it over to fence in your portfolio and taking a, a portion of that one to five to 10%, some of you more <clears throat> and putting in the crypto. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, I was speaking at an event and I sat down with this young guy and he put his money, all of his money in the crypto. He had about 300K in the crypto. And I was like, man, do you have anything else? And he's like, no. And I'm like, you got to diversify. And he's like, I'm just going all in on this. Anyway, I circled back this year because I started getting into it and I asked him about his portfolio, how he's doing. And right now he's over a million dollars. And at the day I talked to him, he sent me a screenshot. He was down a hundred grand too, um, which was crazy. But it's volatile, right? The market's volatile. You're gonna have that a swing difference, especially when you have that amount in. And so he's like, I'm holding on to it for another five, 10 years, whatever. He's like, until it hits 10 million, then I'll sell. And so here's what you need to know. You gotta decide what is your outcome? What do you want? What kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you just wanna make a couple, you know, a thousand or two grand a month? You can do that, right? Or are you looking to hit it big? You got, you can do that, but you gotta risk a lot of money, but you can't play on emotion. You gotta play on principles. You gotta be able to maybe look at your technical analysis and read the charts and, and read what's going on out there in the marketplace and what people are doing, right? It seems like it's a big place. So you gotta decide what's best for you. Some people, they're a little too scared. Their risk tolerance is really low. They're like, I'm done. I'm not in this thing, okay? But for me, I know this. You can't win if you're not in the game. And I'm not just talking crypto, I'm talking in the market. You got to be in the market because the number one thing is you got to make money. Number two, you got to keep your money. Number three, you got to invest your money. Your goal isn't to hold on to money. Your goal is to make your money work for you. I wish I would have learned that at an earlier age, right? I always knew investing was important. We hear it. <clears throat> and I, my first investing experience was horrible. I put like, I don't know, like 10 grand in and I lost like two grand and it was 2008, in the beginning of 2008. And then I put my money in with Charles Schwab, another 10 grand and I was just like 22, 23 at the time. And I didn't see any growth, I lost like $1,000 so I pulled it out, not understanding what was going on in 2008. And so anyway, it was a mess. But I had a bad experience, but no one taught me to look at why do things move the way they move? How are things connected? Because there's all these different levers or levers, whatever you want to call them, that control one thing but have a, an effect on another. So you got to decide, well, what does you know Robin Hood stopping trading do for portfolios what is that what happens when they lose a bunch of money what happens when that stock goes down right like you got to look at all these things and so take it synthesize it figure out what's best for you i'm speaking very macro a lot of you experts could get down into the dirty on, on all this i want to make this general for a lot of people a lot of my six seven eight figure entrepreneurs what they do is they just throw money into things without totally understanding it or just having a high level overview because they know they can make more money. But for some people, they're on a fixed income and they they gotta you know be really strategic. Well, then you really need to dig into the details in the weeds, okay? So with that, GameStop soared within a few days, dropped significantly. I think it's down to maybe like $138 a share compared to its peak around 337. Robinhood shutting everything down from trading and people uh, having um, just not using Robinhood, choosing not to use Robinhood anymore. I'm seeing that all over my newsfeed. A lot of people withdrawing their money, which is making a huge impact on them. But then you see cryptocurrency shooting to the moon because one man, one tweet or one hashtag within his uh, profile. I mean, it's crazy, but you got to be in the game. If you're not in the game, you got to ask yourself why not. And if your risk tolerance is low and your outcome is, look, I just want to live a comfortable life. What I'm doing works. Awesome. But if you're looking to play at a bigger scale and you want to take advantage of the market, well, you got to understand the game is set up against you. So you may need to chip away at it a little bit at a time. And then maybe with some luck or some grace, you'll hit a big on something, but you got to risk. So don't risk anything you're not willing to lose. 
So with that, hope that helps. I think I'm gonna get some crypto, um, I'm gonna get some crypto people, experts in here, people who are making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on uh, crypto. I might even get some people who are, you know, just typical financial advisors to come in and talk about both sides, but especially the regulated market out there, the S&P 500 and where it's going and decision Biden's making and all the executive orders and how that's affecting everything. And so we'll have more to come on that. But hey, you know what? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. We're giving videos three days a week, more to come. I'm gonna be a little bit more professional, not with my backwards hat and recording this video wee early in the morning. So with that, subscribe, share this video if it made an impact for you or if you think someone can use it because hey, you know what? They, they're not in crypto and they should be in crypto or they're not in the stock market, they should be in the stock market. Remember, play the game for the long term. That's what I do. You can make some short swing trades here and there and make some extra cash but for the long term because in five ten years it goes by in a blink of an eye and you're gonna wish that you played in the game so with that joe mavu master life by design see you guys